Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now it's been a long while since I last posted my last video and that's because, uh, well, I haven't had the inspiration to post anything else. But thanks to the gods over at Egosoft, they have graced us with another DLC. It's X4 Cradle of Humanity. Now this uh, DLC came out a couple of days ago. Uh, so I have had the chance to familiarize myself with uh, kind of the story and the new faction. So what's been added is the faction you can see in the background here, which is the Terrans. Now the Terrans are kind of um, the... they are the original humans, they are technologically advanced, and the community of, um, of uh, the other factions I kind of see them as oppressive overlords that they really don't want to mess with. So the Terran Protectorate, which is one of the new factions, is kind of this um, hostile force uh, in the view of the other factions. The other Terran fact uh, faction, with, which is the Zigaris Pioneers, uh, they are more friendly with the other factions because they have been historically separated from the Terrans. Now we are going to start in a new game here, and we are going to start as the Terran Cadet of the Terran Protectorate. In the aftermath. Oh boy, I can just I skip that. Remember, I have dreamt of seeing Earth, humble origin of our species, up close. Since I was born on a trading vessel in the far orbit around Titan, the core of the solar system remains, according to Protectorate policy, beyond my reach. That is, until I have made a name for myself. Having recently graduated from cadet school, I aim to do just that. I really didn't mean to skip that part. My finger just hovered over the enter key and it kind of pressed on accident. But um, we're just going to go with it. It's the way it is now. Um, in this Let's Play, I'm going to be focusing on story missions. Uh, but we're going to see where we'll have to go with the Empire building. Uh, a couple of the missions are kind of high stakes, so we kind of need some economy to go around, uh, but we'll see where we end up. Um, so let me just skip over this uh, loading time and we'll jump back when the game is ready. And we're live, I think. Yes, indeed, we are. So we're almost done with loading in. And we are going to jump into the game. And here we are. Oh, tell me again why we're stuck with maintenance duty in Mars of all places. You tell me. Alright, so let's fly up on the satellite here and uh, let's start these uh, missions. Oops. Alright, so before we continue here, let's just take a little look at the um, ship we're currently in. So we're in a Kakuri, which is the... We're already three months out of cadet school and they still bob us off with housekeeping jobs. We should be out there, with intervention, saving the universe. Sure thing, man. So, we are in a Kakuri, which is, uh, if my memory serves me right, the weakest fighter in the Terran Protectorate. Though it is better than the scout we would have started in had we chosen the Zagaris Pioneers mission start. Uh, as you can see, we have kind of an overview over Mars, the Astrobite, and Belt and Venus. And since we start out with plus 10 relationship with the Terran Protectorate, as you can see here, we do have access to Mars, Mercury, and Venus. We do not have access to the Earth and the Moon. We need a plus 20 relationship with the Terran Protectorate to gain that privilege. So, with that out of the way, let's continue. Let's check up on this satellite here. 
which is not there, actually. Wait, that one's missing. Yes. Why is it? Because enemies. Mission command says to just deploy a new one. <laughs> All right. So let's just be clear, this ship, this guy is flying, is much superior to mine. So that ship is the heavy fighter of the Terran Protectorate. It's quite a lot more powerful than the Kukuri we're in right now. I can't quite remember the specific name of that ship. Uh, but it is much better than what we have here. And this ship is also very slow. Look at that 148 cruising speed. That's yeah, nothing. Huh? You'll have to get out of your ship and repair it manually. Ukraine. Yeah, that one's completely trashed. And it looks like it's been that way for... 13 Earth days, 22 Earth hours, 9... Damn. Sure. All right. We have a critical engine failure in our sector. Botany Club. Dead in the void. I repeat. A distress signal. Oh. We have a civilian ship signaling distress from the outskirts of the sector. Apparently they're having some sort of emergency. Uh, engine failure. Permission to investigate. Mars doesn't do accidents, cadet. Permission granted. Proceed with caution. Oh, finally, some action. Let's put our maintenance skills to good use for once, eh? No, it's on left here. So I think uh, they want me to use the long range scanner, yeah. Now, how did that long range scan work again? Don't worry, citizens. The cavalry's here. Yes. Alright, so let's just take care of these Xenon ships first. So these little laser things I got, they are good against shields, as you can see, but they are utterly useless against hull. And I think we can actually see that on the um, Let's see on the ship here. Let's see ship details, please. Information loadout. Terran S pulse laser. Yes, yeah, you can see here. Oh, actually no, they do equal amounts of damage shield and hull. Maybe those Xenon ships were maybe just very poorly shielded. Oh well. Let's continue the story. Classification, high-tech trader, crew, deceased, cargo, classified, reconstructing events, processing, 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 permission has been denied, investigation terminated. That's quite enough. Our specialists will take over from here, and you, cadets, will hear from me shortly. Dismissed. Oh boy.
Uh, did we break some sort of protocol? Uh, I'm not seeing any reprimands in my profile. Well, at least that maintenance task has been cleared, eh? So, I guess we're officially on recovery? Uh, let's find something else to do until Mission Command comes back to haunt us. I'll stick with you. Yeah, alright, so let's find something else to do. Let's see if we can do this mission which is posted over here. Let's just get a wee bit closer. Maybe within 20 kilometers or so. Uh, to take a look at that mission. Let's see, we can do sensitive data. Oh no, we cannot do that one. So, let's summarize. Someone or something raided that trading vessel for highly classified high-tech goods. They knew the trade route in the outer reaches of our stronghold sector and took out nearby satellites to let the distress signal run aground. And on top of that, Xenon scouts are still drawn to the wreckage days after the incident. Something's brewing. Yeah, that sounds fishy. Now, I've already played through this story, so I already know kind of what's going on. Um, though my memory is that of a demented person, and I can't really recall everything. Uh, there is a certain pirate group that's behind this. That much I can say. Uh, and we'll get to know them very soon. Mm, not really seeing anything. Let's uh, let's get long range scanner and see if there's any stations we can uh, fly up to to get some missions. Let's see. There is one here. Autopilot engaged. Autopilot disengaged. Ah, yes, I remember. The trigger for continuing the storyline is actually flying close to the accelerator over here. I remember because I, I kind of struggled last time to find, you know, what I should do to make the mission progress. And it's actually to fly close to an accelerator. So, uh, and the accelerator should be right down here. So we'll... Uh, We'll go ahead and do that now. Like a travel speed of two kilometers per second is actually very slow. Um, you know, it's been a while since I started out in this ship and uh, it's very, it's unfair, unfair, unfamiliarly slow to me. There is actually a very nice mission here. It's a policing mission. We might pick that up just for the sake of it. No, we don't have Seda, so we shouldn't actually pick it up. Might just be a time hog. So we'll, uh, we'll actually skip it. So let's fly close to the accelerator here. We might have to fly through it. So let's do that. Yes. Venus. We got a message, at the very least. We're so close to old Earth now. You can almost imagine seeing it. Floating out there. In the distance. A shame that High Command only issues the inner core license to citizens. Unless you're Earthborn, of course. In their mind, that's the highest honor there is. Yep, yeah, discriminatory. Okay, so we got a message here. It's, uh, Dear Sir, the community of planets irresponsible in action in containing the Xenon has once again demonstrated that Sol... That Sol can only be safe if the Terran Protectorate takes a proactive stance. We request that any able citizen 
of the Sol system reports to their designated representative. Furthermore, we also welcome any individual from outside Sol as long as they prove to be capable. You can find your contact information, our contact information, in your mission interface. Alright, let's go to the mission interface. Doesn't seem to be anything. Um, was I wrong? Maybe we. Looks like we're still in Mission Command's good books. They just sent us a posting to reporter site. Ooh. So we got to continue that um, that mission. So let's go ahead and open up the mission interface. Let's abort that mission. And let's go for the Defenders of Saul. So let's see on the briefing here. Do you have what it takes to step forward and rise up to defend our pristine system, and by extension, the entirety of the Gate Network? Are you ready to join the esteemed ranks of the Terran heroes of old and stop the Xenon menace dead in its tracks? Then High Command needs you to step Oh, to take part in Saul's newest outreach program and assist the Saul-born militia in one of their legendary, daring operations. Please find the attached rally point coordinates. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I figured you two would jump at this opportunity. Do not disappoint me. Ma'am, understood. Alright, so let's go. Entering Mars. So, with a travel speed of 2 kilometers per second, the distance of 320 kilometers is going to take quite some while. So, uh, I might as well take this time to tell you about the lore of this world. So, the Terrans were originally the ones who created the Xenon, kind of the big bad artificial intelligence faction that, that that's out to destroy all living life. Uh, the Terrans created that, uh, and that's kind of one of the reasons the community of planets, which is kind of the, let's call it semi-allied uh, faction of uh, estranged humans and other races, uh, it's kind of the reason they really don't like the Terrans. Uh, because the Xenon are an ever-present threat, and the Terrans, in their mind, uh, in the community of planets' mind, hasn't really be taken that opportunity to reflect on their mistakes and change their ways. They kind of see the Terrans as very oppressive, very uh, authoritative, uh, and they really don't like that. Uh, and to be honest, they, the Terrans are exactly that, and you, you'll you get a good feeling of that uh, in the storyline, because you get to see the Terrans from the inside. Uh, and as your mother always told you, it's the inside that matters, and the Terrans are kind of rotten, kind of rotten, but they do have the best ships, because they are more technologically advanced than the other factions. Also, from a gameplay perspective, if you are planning on doing some empire building with the Terrans, just know that they follow an entirely different um, chain of wares that you have to produce than the other factions do. The other factions just differ in food production, but the Terrans has an entirely different um, chain of supplies. They are almost incompatible in every way with the uh, other factions uh, supply chains um, the only where they have in common are the you know the ore the silicon the methane the hydrogen and the energy cells everything else is different so just know that Terran security to Talati vessel you are approaching Terran restricted space please divert your course this is Taladi Trader Lucrative Investments to Terran Patrol. 
We are looking for mutual opportunities to make profits. We are not interested. We insist that you divert your course. But we can surely achieve mutual benefit from... Negative. We demand that you change course immediately. Maybe we can persuade you with valuable information about... We order you to change your course immediately, or we will be obliged to take measures to protect the safety and security of this system. Okay, okay. Changing course. The unrealized profits from this unfortunate loss of opportunity. Please halt. We will be scanning your... <laughs> of course. Of course, we had to be interrupted by a fucking police drone. So let's let it finish its scan so that it doesn't get angry with us, and then we'll go. So what happened there was the Teladi, they are a lizard race. And they're... And they are, for the lack of a better word, um, kind of the stereotypical money-grubbing aliens. Um, they really love trade, and they really love the idea of profits. Uh, but they are kind of fair about their profits too. They they don't cheat their trade partners, but they do seek to maximize their profits. And if that happens to maximize your profits too, then that's great. If it doesn't, well, that's too bad. Um, the Tiladi are probably one of the easiest factions in the game to befriend, because they have a very nice sector called Grand Exchange. Uh, where you can put your mining ships to auto mine, and they will have a plethora of stations to, to trade with. Um, and each of those trades will give you a reputation increase. So if you're needing reputations for blueprints for your stations, the Tiladi are a prime choice uh, because of that very fact. Another good faction to do that with is actually the uh, free split families, I think they're called, uh, because uh, many of their sectors are also very good for mining and they have mining stations within those sectors. Uh, it's a bit more risky though, because their sectors are right next to Xenon sectors, uh, and that is not the case with uh, Grand Exchange, with the uh, Teladi. Soulborn militia business that's been all over the news. Some say it's because of increased xenon activity. Others that it's some sort of uh, publicity stunt, or even a political power play against the intervention core. Uh, well, I'm not one to complain. Not this time, anyway. <laughs> Whatever gets us in high command's good books. Eh? Militia squadrons and foreign auxiliaries. Those of you who were not lucky enough to be born on Terran soil, let me hereby welcome you formally into the ranks of the first and last defenders of the Gate Network, and to those who are Sol-born, or even Earth-born, to resist the temptation of heroism and put the defense of our sanctuary Hello, first Hello. is a sign of providence and true courage. By coming here, you have already made Earth proud. Captain... The ball is in your court. Much obliged. This is Captain Nowak Lee of the Military Supply Transport, Silverback. Another welcome from me and my crew, and glad to see the militia is keeping its promises. All squadrons, prepare for liftoff. Alright, so we're gonna escort a critical war support ship. Unlock, please. So it is a large type ship, which means that we can get within its gravity well and uh, just kind of coast with it. So we don't actually have to follow it. We can just uh, we can just coast with it, like so. And that lets us, well. Take it very this is your easy. Captain speaking. We're commencing our approach towards the Sol Gate. Please keep an eye out for resistance. All right, will do. I'm just gonna have to take a little toilet break here, so I'll pause the.
recording and I'll resume when I get back. All right, and we're back. That was a toilet break that ended up being a food break. So let's see, we are in the middle of escorting this transport. On fast approach. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, we'll have to wait until they get within range of this on, ship's turrets. Because we don't have a chance right now. We need to wait until they get a bit more split up and uh, separated. Like maybe now. And don't get me wrong, we do want to destroy these ships because we might get some uh, reputation improvements with the Terran Protectorates. And also, loot. Yes. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go for the next one. Let's get some more illegal stuff. And there we are. Let's see. There is one more over here. Let's boost over. It drains our shields, but we're gonna have to get there faster if we want to be able to destroy it. I don't actually think we destroyed any of those ships personally, except that one. So we're not gonna get much in terms of reputation improvement. Let's get these things. Yes. We might want to actually drop all of our illegal inventory. Oh no, it seems seems we're fine. Oh boy. Uh, we're gonna have to try and catch up with the freighter now. Let's see if we can't do this. This is your captain speaking. On behalf of the crew of the Silverback, I would like to mm. thank you for your continued support during these ah, turbulent episodes. God damn it. We should be able to manage the last leg of our route without further interruptions. Alright, that's good. Hey, <laughs> a piece of cake. Let's see what mission command has in store for us next, huh? I think it's now that we get to meet the boss lady of this uh, whole operation. Kind of looks like a Karen, so just so you're prepared. Might not be now, actually. Might just contact us through radio. Oh, now would you look at that station? Oh, we're really planning our flag, aren't we? Wonder what the rest of the network has to say about that. Anyway, following protocol, I'm guessing that the next logical step is armored lockbox. So let's see. I just hope they give us the ones with proper friend foe detection. So now I switched over so that I only have one of my turrets available uh, and the reason for that is So the reason I switched to only having one turret at a time is because um, seems a bit dangerous placing them so close to the outpost. Uh, but who are we to judge? Is because it's very difficult to uh, destroy these lockboxes with only one turret available at a time, or uh, multiple. I mean. Standard patrol left. <laughs> Those are easy. You just circle 
around the station for a few minutes and tell them that everything's clear. Because if we have multiple turrets ready, they will all try to aim where you're aiming, but since you're so close, there will be kind of a distance between them. And so some of the shots won't really hit um, the lock area. And what happens then is that the whole box explodes. What's up, Nelly? What is up indeed, Cadet? There appears to be a nav beacon suspiciously close to our outpost. A nav beacon with no apparent owner and purpose. Investigate, but keep quiet about it. Uh, so we are not going to be looking for the signal leak, which the um, kind of on-screen prompt here asked us to do, because that starts the main mission, but we'll get to the main mission through other means, through this mission chain. Uh, and I think this is kind of a more interesting take on it. And here you can see, this nav beacon belongs to the Yaki. some sort of signal at first. I'm afraid we will have to postpone your secret mission. Our scanners have picked up an approaching Xenon vessel. Saddle up and join the defenses. Yes, ma'am. But where are they? Here? So that's a T. Now, T are the Xenon Light Scouts. They are very, very uh, fragile, you could call it. Very easy to destroy. They're not like the M, which is... No, it's not. It's dead. All squadrons, prepare to launch. We have an incoming Xenon Strike Force. Engage when ready. Mission Command signing off. By the sun! What could be more important than this? Politics, I guess. Uh, the lady you heard on the radio, she does have a vendetta of the other factions uh, within the Terran Protectorate, and she kind of wants to make life difficult for them. Uh, we are not going to engage that fleet until they engage with the station. Because that is a death sentence. Uh, remember, we do... Oh, there they are. We do have a very, very, very light ship. That is not at all appropriate for encounters with large groups. So we're going to try to bypass the group on the right there, and engage this lone ship on the left. Alright, let's see here. I think we got it. So every ship we destroy here, since it's... Oh, Let's just pause a little bit, guys. It seems that my woman wants to talk with me. And we're back. She just wanted to say that she was leaving me for work. So, um, not having a love life crisis right now. Maybe later. We'll see. Well, let's try and get this one before the station gets it. Maybe we got it. So I think we get like 10,000 credits for every every ship with, that we destroy, and that's without the police license. If we had the police license, we would get much more. Let's try and catch up. And we're out of shields, so let's pray that they don't turn their guns towards me. Yeah, so we managed to destroy two ships there. So we got 20,000, and I think we managed that one as well. So we'll get another couple of credits. So let's see if we can't 
like uh, cheat our way into getting this one as well. No. We're gonna have to destroy the engines, oh boy, of that miner. And the problem is that miner has turrets, so I'll have to place myself pretty perfectly behind here. So let's see here. Oh, I get it. Destroying those engines might slow them down. I think we're safe here. Yes, we are safe here. So let's just continue blowing up these um, engines, and I think we'll be good. Job well done, squad. Let me be absolutely clear in case that trespasser's speech got to you. You are not troublemakers. You are problem solvers. Our neighbors might not see it that way, but the network depends on people like you. People like us won't hesitate to do what's necessary. Now I need you two on standby while I sort out this diplomatic mess. Oh, a situation like that can even crack a nut as tough as mission command. Uh, at least it seems like we did well in her eyes this time. <laughs> and we even got a tidy sum for our troubles. All right, let's go ahead and upgrade our ship's engines. Well, this might be a good opportunity to buy a few upgrades for our ships. <laughs> I've taken the liberty of marking the nearest station for you. If you think you're already set, just let me know. So as you probably heard there, uh, the Terran Protectorate is kind of... Mm, hostilely? Uh, it, it's kind of doing a hostile takeover of this sector and the Antigone Republic, uh, which is kind of a sub-faction of the Oregon, is not very happy about that. And I think actually there are a couple of missions later in this mission chain. Okay everyone, listen up. We've got reports of increased Xenon activity in Savage Spur 2. As everyone is aware, this is the primary Xenon entry point into the region, and it's our duty to handle this situation. Our mission is to initiate a precision strike in order to divert their attention from our movements in Getsufun. Stay sharp! There are a couple of missions later in this mission chain which regard the alliance between the Antigone Republic and the Argon Federation. So we'll get to play some high, high politics later in this uh, mission chain, which I always uh, enjoy. Entering system, Sol. There we are. So what I tried to do there is retain speed as I kind of realigned my ship in travel mode. So what you do there is instead of tapping brakes or you know accelerate or whatever, you just tap shift one 
which brings you in and out of travel mode and that it it uh, it treats your movements differently because if you were to break you would lose your speed bec before you could uh, reinitiate travel mode but if you do it this way you retain your speed kind of like Newtonian physics um, and it's just easier to Entering. to retain speed in travel mode like so so just for an example let's say I wanted to travel to the station to the right and I braked and then initiated travel mode it will look like this see you gotta slow all the way down, but if I just tap in and out of travel mode and kind of steer in the middle of that, I kind of launch myself like that a bit too much, and I lose nearly no speed. So that's uh, that's kind of a, a nice little tip if you wanna do some uh, wicked turns in and out of jump gates in travel mode. So that's a little hot tip for you right there. For now, though, let's just approach the station and uh, dock and upgrade our engines. So here is the docking port. Now what's really nice about the fighters is that you can initiate or you can go out of travel mode really close to the station. Keeping up with those xenon was tough, huh? So I recommend bumping your engines up a tier. And you can never go wrong with better weapons either. Don't forget to stock up on deployables. Satellites, nav beacons, mines, you never know. Successfully docked. So as you can see, we have the worst engines. Uh, so what I was about to say is that you can break really close to the station and the ship will actually be able to break. If it was a larger ship that probably had higher speed, they would need more distance to break and that can get kind of difficult to, um, to calculate. But with smaller ships, it's very easy. So now let's see, we have just above 200,000 to play with. Let's get an all around Mark II. It's a marked improvement. I also want better thrusters. Movement is very important in dark fights. Let's see if we can afford some better weapons. We have 80,000 left. No, we cannot afford better weapons. We can afford better scanners though. And docking computer. Docking computer is very, very fun. So let's... Okay, so that's a bit much. We don't need a police uh, scanner. Don't let them get away. We'll sell our missiles because we don't need them. Uh, we need a satellite. We already have one. I don't think we want any crew. Maybe a pilot. Nope, can't get a pilot. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. So... Let's see, where are we? We are in Jupiter. Getsufune, it uh, connects to um, the Antigone Republic with a jump gate down here. So if we want to get to like the old map, non the DLC content, we'll uh, jump down here. But the mission chain will get us uh, to very many areas. We can't really do either of these missions because this one is too difficult. Uh, we can't really harm like a medium trader. Uh, and this one we, we don't have the storage necessary. Nor the money to buy the resources. The game always takes a very long time to save. I think that's one of the areas they could try to improve on, but I don't know how easy it is, because they have to save the state of the entire... Let's pay the outpost another visit, and see what mission command has in store for us. 
the entire galaxy. So it's, it has to be a large file. Okay, we got a message before we continue. Uh, this message is from the Xenon War against... Oh, didn't we already read that? Maybe. Oh, no, it's this one. Wartime Economics. Oh, this is our uh, wingmate. Hey there, pilot friend. I've had some time to ponder that whole soul-born militia business, and a few things strike me as odd. Why would interve intervention allow them to invade their turf? Whoever is behind this operation must really be throwing their raid around. If our goal is to move up in the ranks and get access to high-stakes mission, we have to, a we have to ace this assignment ASAP and impress the big brass. If you say so. I'm just gonna go ahead and destroy this drone because more relationship is always good. Oh boy! Oh boy! All right. So if you're around a station of a faction you want to befriend, just whenever you hear "stop that criminal" or a "known smuggler" or whatever, just target nearest enemy, whatever hotkey you have. I have that uh, as arrow down on the gamepad. Um, or the D-pad, and uh, just shoot it. You'll get relations super fast. Well, super fast and super fast. Um, it's an effective way of gaining relationship. So we should get a thank you message very soon now. Well, watch me say that. And thanks for your role. Ah, see, there you go. And we actually already have plus 13 relationship. Uh, if you have a police license, you also get some more money for doing that. But at the point where you can afford a police license, you probably don't need uh, like small ship money. You need the big capital ship money because you get a lot of those. Entering asteroid belt. So the difference between 2.2 kilometers per second and 2.6 kilometers per second might not seem like much, but it's actually nearly a 30% increase. So uh, it's quite noticeable that we're going faster now. I would like a faster ship. Uh, I know, for example, that the heavy fighter uh, Ares with all-round engines Mark III, that's a pyramid ship, by the way, um, that one can go around. 4.5 in travel mode, and that's much more comfortable. It's a much better ship too, so we might uh, might have to get some relationship with the Holy Order of the Pontifex uh, to be able to buy that ship. That's all in the future though. So let's report for duty. Well then, recruits. As a reward for your commitment, let me paint you a bigger picture. High Command may not like it, but if we continue to face the Xenon head on, scouring the network with imposing fleets, heroically putting out fires wherever they flare up, we are bound to lose this war. Do not misunderstand. The Intervention Corps is indispensable, both as long arm of the Protectorate and winged savior alike. However, this eternal meat grinder of clashing fleets cannot be a permanent solution. To truly beat the Xenon in a war of attrition, it is paramount that we instead thwart their infrastructure wherever possible. Those parasites are lurking at the edges of our sectors. Avoiding our defenses and ciphering off our resources. I am putting you on scouting duty. Report any sightings of Xenon infrastructure units directly to me. Alright, so we are going to do that. Yeah, she does have a very good point. Which gives me an idea. See, the Xenon might appear as an unstoppable and unknowable force at first glance, but the way they wage war isn't so different from us. Like us, they rely on their scouts to gauge their enemy's strength and send an appropriate force to deal with them. But, unlike us, they're simple-minded machines. It's all action-reaction. So, if we attack a scout somewhere in... Uh, no man's space... We can 
divert their forces, potentially leaving their infrastructure. Thanks for your help. I picked out a nice spot for our operation. Not too far from the outpost, but still close enough to the Xenon infested outskirts of the sector. A satellite might serve as bait and help us spot incoming scouts at a distance. See, this is why we needed that satellite. Now, we are going to do that, but I just want to see, theoretically, how much would that heavy fighter cost us. Uh, maybe we'll want a katana. Katanas are a very, very good ship. But we might want a fighter because they're a bit more... Um, a bit more reasonable. You can land them on ships and we'll need that for, for missions and such. So let's just see how much would all of this cost us if we were to like really max it out. Like with meson beams, my god, those are very nice. Though I don't remember if they are like lance weapons. I don't know if they auto target. I don't know if they auto target. We might rather go for the proton barrage. 3600 meters per second versus 6002. Ah, oh, it's a hard sell. It's a very hard sell. Because the speed of the projectile decides whether or not you hit, and the tracking ability of the turret also decides, and I don't know if this one can track. Because it doesn't doesn't tell in this in this uh, image. Like the pulse, th those can track. There's very low effective range on that pulse laser. Uh, that one as well. Mason beam has a longer range. Ah, man, I don't know. Initial heat, heat build up. And see, like this, it tells me there will be almost 20 seconds. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just say we go for the Proton Barrage, because that seems to be the best in between. And of course, all of the software, some consumables, yeah, we don't really care. And of course, a pilot and maybe some crew. 3.5 million. It's gonna be a while until we get 3.5 million. So, we're not gonna worry about that for now. We might be able to sell this ship for some money, though, so we're not entirely out of luck. It's very nice the things they have added with the volumetric uh, fog uh, that you can see on the left there. That wasn't in the game at launch, but it, it suits the aesthetic very, very nicely. Oh, did I actually remember to, like, unpause the recording? Yeah, we are indeed recording. Alright, so let's deploy a satellite. You've already seen how fast these things are. As soon as one appears, try to shoot it out of travel drive. Okay, so here it is. There. Gotta follow it. Maybe we can catch up in time? Probably not, though. Yeah, it's already speeding up. We have to get it now. Right now. Give it something to think about. Oh, let's get it. Let's get it. Stop! Stop! Don't destroy it just yet. I just want a closer look. Well, we've still got the chance. Alright, so my wingmate is gonna come around and he is. Data stream detected. Oh boy. 
I'm supposed to. Uh, let's just blow it up, all right? <laughs> Please don't tell anyone about that, yeah? Oh, we are two thirds in. Not a second too soon. Let's hurry past them before their stupid machine brains have time to react. Oh, these fools don't even realize they're pointing us right at our target. We are two thirds the way in to be able to make Seda. Now, Seda is something I honestly think that the player should be able to start with. Um, we are not, of course, but. Um, that's just the way it is. So let's try and evade these fighters and sneak up behind and destroy the uh, vulnerable Xenon S ships. Now the S ships are the Xenon's medium transporters. They are kind of squishy but they can they can take some hits before they go down, and they do have a turret that we have to be wary of. See that? That's their mining turret. Now, the mining turret doesn't really do any damage. So we don't have to worry about that. It's only the turret that we should be wary of. And our turrets are about to overheat. I think we can take it before they overheat though. Yes. Oh, just, just barely. Okay, so now let's get the other one. Kinda getting some graphical artifacting with the volumetric fog. Nothing to be done about that though. Gotta get under the belly because that turret is targeting, targeting, targeting. My goodness, English is difficult. It's targeting me. So it seems like my ability to speak has been drastically reduced. So I think probably we're gonna finish this mission and then I'm gonna take a break. Like uh, resupply my speech, resupply my brain. Maybe eat some more, I don't know. Entering system, Savage Spur. So this is a Xenon sector. More beacons, and they form a trail. Onward, I'm right behind you. I'm right behind you. Right behind you. Obelisks! 
all squads. Return to base immediately. The entire sector is descending on us. So that would be the Yaki. They are the third faction that's been added in this DLC. They are... Oh, what should you call them? They're kind of uh, Argon slash Terrans infected with Xenon, self-infected with Xenon. Uh, their story is that when the gate collapse happened, so they couldn't get around anymore, they were trapped with, uh, within the Xenon sector. And to survive, they had to hide on some asteroid or some such and integrate with Xenon technology in order to not be targeted by the uh, Xenon. And that's how they survived. And given time, they discovered that they could somehow influence the Xenon to do their bidding in a very limited fashion. They are by no means the masters of the Xenon, but they are starting to... Uh, what should we call it? Exert influence over the uh, the AI. So it's it's interesting stuff, definitely interesting stuff. Entering system. Get Sophuna. All right, so now that military outpost is going to get swarmed. So what happened to our squad mate? Um, I, I won't really tell because it's still part of the story, but we will see him again soon-ish. Now see, I would like to fight the Xenon that are here, around this capital ship, uh, but the problem there is that we won't get reputation and we won't get paid. So I really want to destroy the Xenon around the Solborn Militia Outpost, because that way we get one, we get uh, the bounty, and two, uh, we get reputation increase, which is vital in this game. Reputation is probably the most important resource you have, at least in the beginning. It's kind of a prerequisite for everything you want to do later on in the game. To have access to blueprints and, and stuff. Use the station as cover. Draw them into our turret line of fire. No matter what's coming at us, we will not budge. Let's just collect all the drops, because it might be very nice, um, very nice for our crafting, and also for the money that we get. And the enemies are not upon us just yet. Let's see. Ah, they are getting kind of close. Uh, not yet, though. We need, need just a little bit more. We need them a little bit closer so that we can fight together with people. Because if we get the aggro of all of those, all of those M ships, uh, we we lose. We can't survive that. So let's. Um, but it seems like we have some allied ships flying in now, and I think we'll be safe to engage one of these one of these guys I don't think we got any of those Maybe we can get this one. Okay. 
Ah, we didn't get it. It got hit by a missile, probably. I don't think we're getting any of these guys. Yeah, the starting ship is just too weak to really do anything. At least we're getting a couple of these drones that might help uh, the reputation, but they might count as just like uh, these uh, illegal smuggling vessels that are found in the civilian traffic. So they they won't give us much, I think, in terms of bounty. But in terms of relationship, well, it's necessary with a good relationship, good reputation. Oh no, it's trapped within the, the thing that happened last time too. Uh, yeah, we're staying away from that thing. Uh, we're not going to win that engagement. Those mines are going to hit it though. Maybe if I drop a mine here. No. Uh, so what I did to uh, fix that problem the last time, because that also happened while I was playing through the missions myself, uh, was just to kind of exit and then re-enter uh, the sector. So that's maybe what I have to do. Yeah, we can't possibly win against that ship, so we're not even gonna try. Let's get in there win it with it. Probably can't though. Yeah, we can't. Thanks for your help. Okay, so the drones didn't actually count. We just got that money for the um, for the small thing. Oh shit! Oh boy! Oh boy! We are getting out of here right now. I think what happened there was that our mine hit the station. Now the station is very hostile to us. Uh, that was not my intention. Uh, we might have to flee, leave the station. We also lost reputation with the Terran Protectorate. Only one. So the general faction still likes us very much, but um, yeah. This is Commander Lee of the Terran Intervention Corps. It appears your little experiment has failed, Delilah. We will take over from here. Long may the sun shine.
that pompous? He can go where the sun doesn't shine. All squadrons, recruits, defenders of Saul, show intervention what we are capable of, and eliminate those Xenon stragglers. So we're just gonna drop a quick little satellite here, and then we are getting out. Uh, we are not going to stay close because the station might decide to attack us and we don't stand a chance in our dingy little fighter. And since the mission objective is just to destroy... We actually don't have to uh, leave the sector. Uh, since the objective is just to kill the remaining attackers, we just have to wait until those capital ships and the station can take care of that Xenon capital ship. There we are. I'll be contacting you individually to discuss our next steps once the dust has settled. Until then, you will want to take some time off. Consider this an order. Except for you, recruit. I'm adding you to the admission list to Maya headquarters. We have a few things to talk about. Okay, so now that lady wants me to dock at this outpost here. Problem is, that outpost is hostile to me. So uh, we're gonna have to leave and do something else until that hostility dies down, because we can't dock right now. In the meantime, uh, I gotta thank you for watching. Uh, we'll pick right back up in the next episode. Uh, until then, thank you. This has been Magnus, and I'm signing off. Goodbye.